So let's dive into shelter and sanitation a little bit. And as you're listening to this, you're probably sitting on your computer or your laptop or cell phone or tablet, something like that. And my guess is, is that you probably have a comfortable living situation. But what happens when all of that changes? What would you do if the grid went down uh, or a disaster destroyed your home or you were forced to leave because the Golden Horde was, was right outside your front door? Shelter is something that we all need to think about and have a plan for and if, if certain situations arise uh, that changes our current living situation. And as they say, you can go three hours without shelter. Now, I know we can all go all day without being at home or being outside or something like that. But imagine if you were hike on a hiking trip or something like that, and you just had the clothes on your back and you needed to spend a night. Your your first goal would probably be, or should be, uh, going and finding some shelter somewhere. If that is that could be a large rock to shield you from the wind, or a tree to hide under when it's raining, or or even a sleeping bag is considered shelter because that's sheltering your body. A shelter is anything that protects you from the elements. Now, unfortunately, we could find ourselves on an extended camping trip uh, and a trip that we didn't plan on taking in the future. And we need to have the skills and the knowledge to be able to find and build shelter, depending on our situation. Shelter could be anything from tying a tarp to a tree until you get to your bug out location or finding a vacant building for shelter from the elements and even security for marauders. Uh, to finding a place to live because a tornado destroyed the, your current home. Uh, finding shelter will be different depending on why you, you're you without shelter in the first place. And this is why it's so important to think about every possibility that, that could cause us to be homeless, basically, and what you would do in those situations. Learning how to build shelter is great and necessary, by the way, but you might also find yourself having to defend that shelter. And whether... Whether this is a vacant building or your bug out location or even your current home, home defense is, is, is pertinent. The most important part about defending your shelter is, is having an escape plan, I believe. Um, unless you have the U.S. military defending your property, there's going to always be somebody bigger, stronger, and faster than you. And, and if they want what you have and they have the means to get that, they're going to take it with you from you with or without your consent. And now if, if our government decides that we need, they need our home for quote unquote national security reasons, um, we could be, you know, we could end up be fighting the military and, and that's just a lost cause and we probably need to get the, get, get our butts out of there. Now, there are some measures you can take now to make sure your current home is a little more secure, like installing alarms and, and securing your perimeter and just keeping all the doors and windows locked, basically. And, and having situational awareness is key. Always know your surroundings and what poses the biggest threat. Get to know your neighbors and, and find out who are the ones that are going to help you protect your home in the future. Or maybe find out the ones that, that you need to kind of protect your home against. And and don't do things like, like hide your key under the doormat and stuff like that. This is one of the oldest tricks in the book. And this is, this is probably one of the first places that somebody's going to look if they want to get into your home. If it's absolutely necessary to do something like this, have a hide a key that is, is kind of camouflaged to fit the surroundings. You know, a, you know, make it a rock that you put the key in or anything like that. Or have a certain spot where it's buried, something like that, that only your family knows about. But remember, situational awareness is even more critical when you're in a situation where you're looking for shelter. You're going to de- need to be more aware about your environment because you'll not, you won't be as comfortable there as you would be, say, in your own home. And there might be somebody in that area that is comfortable there, that does know the surroundings and is looking to take advantage of you and they, because they know the area better than you. Uh, there's no way to know exactly what situations could arise in the future that would require us to build shelter or to find shelter or any of that stuff. So all we can do right now is learn and practice and think about every single possibility that we can that we could possibly face in the future. And that way, hopefully, we can be ready if some if a certain situation presents itself in the future and maybe not get quite caught off guard with, with all of that different stuff as, as it comes to fruition so to speak. So 
along with building a shelter and having a shelter uh, comes sanitation. And sanitation basically goes hand in hand with shelter because if we don't have a way to remove some of the waste from our home, human or otherwise, trash, you know, poop, all that stuff, then we're facing a bigger, a, hu- a, a much bigger issue than just the elements, just the rain or the snow. In an SHTF scenario, medication and medical help and all that stuff will be in short supply. So the last thing you want is to be battling some kind of virus or bacteria caused by human waste or bad hygiene or or you know trash all over the place and you know basically the last thing you want is to have diarrhea or something that could cause you to become dehydrated and and put you in a far worse situation and like the saying goes don't s where you eat and this is for a good reason poop is is full of harmful bacteria and a big difference between urine and poop is that urine is sterile while poop is well we all know it's it's not only smelly but it's also full of bacteria like E. coli, for example. So although your family might be a little bit reluctant, I would devise a plan for relieving yourself, for lack of a better term, somewhere other than inside of your home. Uh, There are a few options available, and this could include like composting toilets, or there's even insects that will help with this composting that actually eat poop. A little gross, but that's what they do. I guess that's what insects do. Um, you could even dig a hole in your backyard or, or you know, there's even the five-gallon bucket method where you take a five-gallon bucket, you line it with the trash bags, and, and you know, then you can just take the trash back out. Uh, me, I will personally be giving this job to one of my boys, and, and they can do that. But along with, with removing human waste, there's also trash removal, and it kind of holds the same issues as human waste, um, maybe even a little bit worse. If you live in an urban area, you might have your trash issue figured out, but the rest of your neighborhood might not. And in just a few weeks, without the trash man taking your waste and, and all of that stuff to the dump twice a week or once a week, um, you could begin that trash could begin piling up and causing sickness for the family or just a completely unsanitary living environment. And unfortunately, this is how low this is on most people's priorities or will be on their list of priorities because first off, they'll be starving and thirsty and that's what they're going to be figuring out. They're going to, just like people today, they're going to toss their trash to the to the side and not even give it a second thought. And because of the waste piling up in an SHTF scenario, personal hygiene becomes even more important than it is today because... Anyone who has teenagers will understand where I'm going with this. If you don't have teenagers, just imagine the dirtiest home that you've ever walked into or something like that. But when you walk into your teenager's room and you'll find dirty clothes all over the place, you'll find dirty dishes under the bed. Some of them will have stuff growing on it because they've been there for months. And and who knows what you would find if you actually open up the closet and look through that a little bit. Now, just imagine that room in your house is is your your living space your your entire house and what are you going to do when the second month comes around of being off the grid and all of these different molds bacteria and viruses would all be all over everything basically in the air that we breathe anything we touch all of that stuff so maintaining personal hygiene by making sure that you and your home are as clean as they possibly can be in a situation like that will reduce the chances of you getting sick And we all know that sometimes when you get sick, you get diarrhea, like I said. And diarrhea can mean more than just a a quote-unquote messy situation. Uh, It could mean dehydration and even worse, it could mean death. It could also mean that we would be facing even more sanitation issues than we were facing in the first place. So to wrap this up, shelter is one of the most important aspects of your survival right now. And it will become even more important in a SHTF scenario. And not only having shelter and protecting it is important, but we also need to make sure that sta- that shelter stays inhabitable. Otherwise, we're going to be moving somewhere else. So as you're preparing, just keep in mind the the shelter and the sanitation aspect of everything and make sure you get off on the right foot and make sure you're paying attention to every different scenario and every possibility because you don't want to get blindsided by something when you think you've got everything figured out you've got a couple years worth of food you got a bunch of water stored but you don't have anywhere to put out the trash or or the toilets overflowing because you can't flush it um, anything like that so so just pay attention to all of that stuff and and just make sure you're looking at the bigger picture when you are on your preparedness journey mm-hmm.